Micah, um, pronouns he, him. I am the uh, creator of Realistically Free on YouTube, Realistically Free podcast. I'm 28 years old. I am a transgender man. Yeah, I think that's 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 a, that's me in a nutshell, I guess. My name is Zion, uh, pronouns he and him. I'm known online as Gifted Young One. Um, and you can find all kinds of stuff that I do online. I do gaming content with my esports team, Space Invaders. I do uh, regular content, like just about my life uh, as a trans man. And I also have a podcast called Becoming Zion. So I do a lot. Um, I do graphic design as well. Um, so yeah, uh, all the things. And, Damn, bro, uh, that, that resume became a grocery okay. list. I made that. I made it like a. I made a quick little ten second intro. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, said, and that's short form. That's short form. There's still I waiting, more. <laughs> I was waiting for her to be like, and another thing. <laughs> no, but li- no, really though. But it's okay. It's fine. Just find my link tree, and all of the things will be settled. That's the short form version. And I'm gonna say I'm Bucky Johnson, uh, 41 years old. Pronouns she, her. I'm, I'm about spirituality. Everything peaceful. Everything love, everything plants, everything weed. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm with you. Come on, let go. She um, said peace, love, and marijuana. Hey, you best believe. <laughs> I, I build trucks for a living. Um, oh, really? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm just, I, I try to be a positive person. So it, it's all about positivity for me. So I'm here just ready to talk and, and have a, a great conversation with two dope young brothers. Let's go. All right. Let's, I guess we should kick this off talking about what kind of started this conversation, right? So um, I think that's a good place to start. Zion um, was scrolling the interweb, <laughs> scrolling <laughs> scrolling Always. the dumpster fire that is TikTok. <laughs> yes, yes. And, dumpster um, fire, yeah. Yeah, and I happened to hop on TikTok randomly for the like first time in months and seeing that Zion had posted a video of someone who was discussing about studs having issues with trans men Mm. and um i said hey you know what like we should talk about this because we're trans men and you know uh zion is uh friends with bunky here and was like let's bring a stud into it because i think it's important as we have this conversation that bunky also has a voice not necessarily speaking for studs and as a whole but being able to give that perspective because us as transgender men i think we're going to have our own perspective that's unique to us not being a part of the lesbian community Um, So that's kind of where this conversation started. If you want to go a little bit more in depth on that, Zai. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just something I've been noticing a lot um, and not even necessarily on TikTok and the internet. Like this is kind of like my second and third interactions uh, with these things and like these secondhand interaction hearing my brothers and stuff talk about their experience uh, with facing some of the injustices uh, from like uh, masculine presenting women or studs within the community. Um, And I say within the community because I feel like you know, within the LGBTQ plus community, like when it comes down to it, the cishet community is always going to see us as, you know, the umbrella, you know, whatever they want to call us, the alphabet squad. Like that's all of us, you know what I'm saying? That's all of us. So I think when we're fighting uh, and like, you know, picking at each other and asking questions and, you know, a way of, of turning your nose up at another community, it's like, it's damaging because it's like we are all fighting the same thing at the end of the day Thanks. like we're we're all fighting the same system especially with inter- intersectionalities of being black or a person of color um it's totally like yo like we need each other it's it not even the fact that you know us just being black but we're black and queer you know so we already have other black people going against us you know what i'm saying so it's just like people within community and your own like culture will come for your neck so it's like it's best to keep the people who relate to you close to you um not only be, not because it's the good thing to do but it's also beneficial to you you know what i'm saying so that is why i wanted to bring this conversation together and it, with some people who actually like think you know what i'm saying use their mind and actually believe in like love and unity and humanity um because i think that's what's lacking in the conversation when i'm seeing this online it's the lack of like okay this is a person like you know even if i don't understand the trans experience I understand, okay, this is a human that is going through life that is already hard in itself, you know what I'm saying? But then you bring in all these other aspects of just, you know, them finding themselves and then the the person that they find in themselves is hated by the world in a lot of aspects. So 
yeah i just feel like that we we can relate a lot and i feel like i want to show a lot of the similarities within the community instead of pointing out differences that really don't even mean anything you know what i'm saying so well to speak to that real quick um in terms of like differences i think that and we'll get more into this on in here bunky's perspective because i think she's gonna definitely offer a different perspective than what i from what i see but um i think really it's this is coming from a place of fear I don't think it's necessarily just trying to point out differences and point out, oh my God, like we're different. I think they want there a lot of studs um, specifically want to make sure that that distinction is clear. That they're there, you're a trans man and I'm a stud and we're different. And I think that's because of how long women have fought for rights, especially when we're talking about the lesbian community and we're talking about studs. I mean, I I remember back when I was perceived as a stud or perceived as uh, a lesbian. I say perceived because I never identified that way, but just because of how I was before I transitioned, I have to honor and acknowledge that part of myself, right? That I was at one point, in fact, a woman. I was at one point perceived and received and presented myself in that way. And I was in that space of lesbians. Like I was in that space. I'm not anymore because I don't think that that space is for me anymore. Not that I have any, um, anything against lesbians or don't want to be friends with lesbians. I, I would love to have more friends who are lesbians, you know, or just in the community in general, but it's not some place that I'd be like, Oh, let me go and like to this specific, this specific group and go hang out there because that's not my space. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I, I remember back then even being seen as like, Oh, like you're trying to be a man, but you're not, mm. you know? And I remember having friends within the lesbian space who were studs and were so tired, sick and tired of being told that they were trying to be men or they were told that, you know, um, because they're being masculine, they want to be the man in the relationship, that it was impossible for them to just have that presentation or exert that masculinity without it having to be a gender thing of like, you're trying to be something you're not and you're this and you're that. So I think this conversation is coming from a place of fear of we fought so long to be seen as masculine women. We love who we are. We don't, and, you know, not to say that trans people hate who we are because I don't hate who I am as a transgender man, but I, I think that's where this conversation is coming from. And I just think that it's not having, the conversation is not being had from a place of compassion and understanding one another and unifying so that people outside of this community can look at us and see those differences and say, no, this is a woman who wants to be a woman, who is a woman, who identifies as a woman and just wants to express herself in a masculine way because that is a part of her. And I am a trans man, which is different from, from a stud. And instead of us saying, look, this is who we are and this is where we stand. And we need the outside, like the community outside of us to understand us and make sure that you're not trying to put a label on me that doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. We're saying it's the it's studs are going it's trans men's fault because now being trans is trending and now people are trying to force me to be transgender or force me to be something that I'm not because I fought for this for so long. Mm. You follow what I'm saying? And maybe I I, and like that's that's kind of like my perception of this conversation. And I, I, I mean, mm. can you speak on that a little bit, Bunky? Like, would you say that's kind of accurate or? You know, I, I love your perspective. <laughs> absolutely love their perspective michael so thank you for that um that is absolutely not my perspective at all, at all. oh okay <laughs> <laughs> she was like no that's not no, it it's <laughs> not uh, because I, I'm, I'm very comfortable in who i am um so there's no need for me to feel like i need to fit in any other box because there's no box like i'm mm -hmm. i mean and that's just how what it means mm -hmm. and if you don't understand that then that's for you to try to digest. I'm not here to be palatable for you. The reason why that is so interesting to me is because I, I'm just not, I'm, Micah, I'm not a person who really gives a damn about a label. <laughs> I don't give a damn about none of that. I, I care about the heart of a person. Right. Um, and, and it's not even about a sexual thing. Any ship I sell on, as long as you are able to give me the, the the good communication, the comprehension, and reciprocity, that's all I give a fuck about. Mm -hmm. Everything else we can kind of fill in the blanks as we go along. Mm -hmm. But um, my stance on on that that whole your whole perspective, I love the, I love what you said, but that's just not it for me. I, I I'm comfortable with me. Yeah. And I I'm, I appreciate 
you you men or men like you because you guys are open enough to be comfortable with you and mm-hmm. and knowing that it's going to cause a lot more scrutiny because mm-hmm. it's like guys were saying both of you it's already hard being a person of color being queer being a part of the alphabet game whatever you want to say <laughs> and then already having to tell your story over and over and over to all these motherfuckers that don't really ma- even matter at the mm-hmm. end of the day but you still have to explain yourself to them because they you getting questions stares and all this other kind of bull crap so mm-hmm. that's not my my perception and um, I, I feel like people just need to be more confident in themselves and, and, and know themselves, mm-hmm. love themselves. Um, and then it w- we wouldn't even have any, to- to- we wouldn't be having topics in, in conversations like this. Cause mm-hmm. it, it just, that's just not my situation. I, that's not my story. Mm-hmm. Have you seen anything like within that space? Like I, I have, but be- those, those type of people are insecure. And oh, I, I agree. Yeah, so, but yeah, I don't associate myself with that. So I've yeah. seen scenarios like that, mm-hmm. and that's why I understand the perspective. It's just not mine to to share. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, um, yeah, I have to answer your question. I've seen it. So I mean, I think that that is what it boils down to. A lot of the times, it is a security thing. You know what I'm saying? A matter yeah. of being like, okay, I know myself, so I don't have a reason to question other folks. And I feel like that's where I stand as well. Like, I don't have a reason to judge anybody. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? As long as you're trying your best, you good. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, Thanks. if you all, you having an off day, that we all do. So mm-hmm. it's stuff like that. So, I mean, even when it comes down to a whole identity thing, I think, yeah, I, I mean, I've experienced it in person and stuff like that. And, you know, I've noticed that sometimes it is a lack of understanding, but I think that that lack of understanding turns into a lot more hateful intentions um like almost the almost it like you know you know sometimes when something's you're not you can't understand something or something's not working and it makes you mad like it almost gives that vibe mm-hmm. sometimes because it's like okay like you know well i don't get it so you know it comes down and it starts to be assumptions happen you know and that's where it gets dangerous and i think that's where a lot of this conversation that's why it's a conversation now only because like you know people are not uh people are not getting the answers like they're not they're, they're instead of like asking somebody who will give them an answer they're assuming and then putting that assumption on the internet for other people to see and that's where it's damaging because it's like you could have had this conversation behind closed doors dm somebody who's like hey i'm open like for me example like a lot of people who online and trans people online are out here like hey ask me the questions i i have this platform because i want to educate people Mm -hmm. you know and there are people like that so there's no need to be like okay well the whole community that y'all must be like this because it doesn't make sense in my mind you know what i'm saying i think that's what it is it's like people trying to create logic around a whole human being like ain't no logic when it comes to humans we are so complex in every we're so multifaceted and we have to that's what we have to be okay with that's what we have to be like okay like people are complex and it ain't no way it's just one answer to this you know what i'm saying so I, I can see where both of y'all are coming from, and I do agree to a certain extent. I do believe that a big part of this is insecurity. Um, but where is that insecurity coming from? I think a big part of it is fear. Um, yes. We could kind of like we can go back down to kind of what I was trying to say earlier, which is about how long did lesbians fight for this, you know, this freedom essentially to be who they are out in the world just like we as trans people are fighting for the freedom to be who we are out in the world and so much of mainstream society or the majority of society sees us as one way and i think that there's that fear of like we fought so long to be seen this way and we don't want to be pressured to be seen a different way and now we're going to attack this community who they see as the threat to the freedoms and the rights and the um yeah, the freedom and the right that they fought for, which I like, I'll give you an example of this, right? Like, and I don't necessarily agree with this line of thinking, but I can understand where it's coming from. Like when we talk about trans women and cis women, or what's that term? Um, turf. There's women who really are like, I don't want this person in this space because I fought for this and I did this and women, women suffering and all of this. And I can understand where it's coming from is that 
everybody wants to claim these titles and these labels and say this is mine i fought for this and this is all i have you get what i'm saying like i like, do you know, i do but then when you think about it in that aspect that they are defining themselves solely mm -hmm. on that mm -hmm. aspect yeah that, oh, absolutely so that's, a, that's that then turns right back to them that's a, a, a them problem you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying you have to work on yourself because but it's easier to point the finger at somebody is, else oh, yeah, than it is to, to look buck. internally oh yeah. Yeah. oh yeah oh yeah because then that, that like we were talking that's about uncomfortable earlier, spot. yes and it takes the spotlight off of you so mm -hmm. of course um yeah right there i like your question yeah. i like i like you like we go be we go get along just fine. We gonna be friends. We gonna be friends after this stream. Oh yeah, big I was also saying though, like you know, a lot of the thing of holding on to a label, um, when it comes down to just masculinity and like presenting masculine or even just engaging with masculinity as far as your identity and your aura, like sometimes you have to make sure you're not getting caught up in in these toxic ways. And I think it's easy because like, you know, a lot of the representations of masculinity in the world are are toxic and, and praise in that way. So I think sometimes maybe we can get caught up in ego too, um, especially when it comes down to it, it, when we're talking specifically about studs and just trans men, just thinking about masculinity as just a spectrum, but also just saying like, you know, as far as masculinity, it's, it's easy to get caught up in those notions because it's so accepted. Um, so I think it's also a maturity thing too, because once you get to a certain level, you stop caring about certain things. You stop, not even, and yes, you stop caring about it because it really doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, like it doesn't affect your everyday life. So it shouldn't be, um, uh, it shouldn't be a TikTok online of you asking a whole community about, you know, if a surgery is, is trendy or if it's a, if it's a trend and stuff like that, you know, well, who's like, asking those questions? Well, I interacted with a, with a stud doing that. So no, 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 no. But like, let's mean? look at let's look at the the demographic of the people who are asking that question. When you think, when you look at, okay, let's. I'm, I'm gonna give They're you. They're younger a lot of the time. That's my point here. It's I'm a generational thing, but, Because Bunky is no. Bunky is 41, right? That's mm -hmm. what you said. She's 41 yes. years old. So you, she was around. You were around in a time that you and I Zion weren't even alive for where the, I'm sure the lesbian community, like the the drag scene, all of that, very different than what it is now. Oh my I know man. some. I know. I know a, 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 mm -hmm. a lesbian woman who's 83 years old. Okay, and she's done so uh, uh, so much for the community. Really, really sweet lady. Okay, and her and I had this long conversation where we were talking about the LGBT community. Like, why are we having, if you think about it, we're having arguments right now and disagreements and misunderstandings within the LGBT community right now that were already solved 20 years ago. Mm. If you really like think about it, trying to reinvent the wheel, and it was already solved 20 uh, years ago. Yeah, essentially. Mm -hmm. But now, here, the new generation of people who are coming in are now starting to question and have these disagreements and trying to go back and be like, well, why is it like this? And why is it like that? And why do you want to do this? And why do you want to do that? Like, this was already solved 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Like, we, you know, gay people historically since the 70s already fought for the rights that we have. And now y'all want to, like, reinvent the wheel and have these conversations again about gay rights and, and, and gen. And now I understand the conversation now of gender because that wasn't really a focal point of the conversation 20 mm -hmm. years ago. So I can see why we're talking about gender yeah. right now, but but ultimately, it, yes, there's some intersectionality between gender and sexuality, but like it, it's becoming a whole disagreement, a whole argument about something that was solved ten years ago, twenty years ago. Like but I, I talk to think, older people, and I don't have these. I don't these things don't even come up. But I've I've interacted trans, with transphobia from older people, not necessarily older like within the the range of like you know being born in like the eighties and stuff. Okay, like so that. now, but what what do you? what do you define as transphobic? Because you also have to understand that our language is different. Yeah. Our language is different from what we know. We have so many more terms. So but much it, more. Yeah, it wasn't more way more terms. than what we had but it was, 10, it was definitely, 10 years ago. Yeah, it was definitely transphobia for sure. It was it was because here's the situation. So um, it wasn't even necessarily, well, it was against me as well, but it was against another, it was trans woman. 
um, as well. So it, the situation is pretty much that the stud would not call her friend, who was a trans woman, you know, the correct pronouns and things like that until they, you know, went through surgery or looked quote unquote like a woman. You know what I'm saying? So it's things like that. So okay, I can see where that would be considered transphobic. I can also see the other side of the coin, whereas you're, again, you're talking about somebody who 20 years ago when transitioning was this secret thing, but it was known, they were not considered trans people unless they did do, do those things. Not because they were saying it as transphobic, but nobody was. So let me put it this way. Our generation right now is the air quotes freest we've ever been. Think about it. We don't have to fight for rights like they did 20 years ago. We can, we can, there's, there's air quotes, same sex marriage rights. There's, there's, we have the right to medications. Now we can go get medical treatment for these things that they did not have 20 years ago, or even like really talk about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? So back then the mentality was if you were, they didn't even say transgender, it was transsexual. They said, if you don't do this, we're going to assume you're a cross dresser because that was a big, a big thing. That was a part of the community back then, cross dressing, ballroom, drag, and it was still gay men and, 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 and lesbian women who were doing those things, but they were not transgender and they didn't even use the term transgender. They said tranny or transsexual. So is it really transphobic or is it coming from someone who from that period of time has this understanding and this belief because of the time that they were born that that's not how it was done and so it's hard for them now to adjust and pivot to what we are doing now 10 20 years ago i'm not disagreeing nah. with you no I'm yeah not no disagreeing with you i'm just saying i'm just trying to open up the, the yeah the I, 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 I have a you playing devil devil's advocate, advocate. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right right so yeah the thing i would say to that is it's not about having a different mindset because if your friend tells you hey this makes me feel uncomfortable and you deny it i think that's where it comes yeah, in that's where it's we like, are in a whole new era yeah yeah because like we are in a new era and it definitely people from a, a whole different era are definitely going to be you know still learning but it's mm -hmm. a matter of learning and then denying to want to learn just saying i want to be <laughs> that's the difference <laughs> i make sure i educate myself I, I talk to trans people and ask the questions that need to be asked i, I it's not that i'm disagreeing i just kind of like devil's advocate to a of course degree. yeah yeah um because you know i gotta do it you know <laughs> yeah yeah and i want to answer it because it's you know? probably somebody out there who has the question just listening and i want you to be able to hear me say look it's not that <laughs> it's not an error thing because that. you can learn yeah because your brain is literally infinite so it's no reason that you can't put a new piece of knowledge in your mind you have but space. that see but that becomes but do they want to oh yeah i mean but i'm saying you should want to if it's your friend you know you should want to if it's your yeah. friend but if they but if you don't do it then i guess we're not then they're not we're not really friends then you don't and, you, yeah you, and, and at that point that person has to your choose level what they put of up with. comfort is more important mm -hmm. or yeah. you know your level of understanding or your ego is more important to you mm-hmm then, and then the trans then person has to just you. find their value and just be like, look, you decide what you put up with. And right. that is what it is, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, you're right. Like it is that it, I'm glad you brought that up because there are definitely people who think that way. And that's their first thing is we are in a different, you know, I thought I, this is not how it used to be, but mm -hmm. in the 21st century. And, and it goes back to ego. <laughs> it goes back to ego. How many of these people, and like, I got a lot of respect for that, for, for, the older people within this space because they did so much for us mm -hmm. we have to give we have to give credit where credit is due you know we weren't even we were like not even little swimmers in our daddy's nut sacks <laughs> you know what i'm saying when when they were you know when stonewall was happening when they were when <laughs> riots were happening when protesting was happening you know what i mean and so they were the ones on the front lines trying to fight for us to have what we have now we don't have to, we don't have nearly as much struggle as they did back then now that's not to say we don't have any struggle mm -hmm. but but we don't have nearly as many problems as they did 20 years ago yeah. um and so i say that to say this i think a part of that is ego of like i fought for this to be this way and you want to change it mm -hmm. it's and, a cultural thing and are too, you saying yeah. what i did is not good enough mm -hmm. that you want more why can't you just be okay with this? Because we fought a lot. Like we lost people. We went through a lot just to have this. Like kind of almost almost like that mentality of like, don't rock the boat. Cause I see that a lot with elderly people. It's like, look, man, you keep oh, that's around, facts. you're gonna take everything away. You know what I mean? Like we just need to be okay with this. <laughs> 
you know and so that that, that scarcity mentality of you're going to take my rights away you're going to do this because you won't shut up and it's not that serious we had it worse 20 years ago and now you won't shut up and we're going to lose what we fought for that's number one and number two is that that sense of ownership that i did all of this and you're going to tell me that now i'm that i'm wrong when i did all this so that you can be who you are right now and you're going to tell me i'm wrong and i got to change how i think when i fought for you to have what you have right now Mm. They you follow do, yeah. what I'm saying, and the answer is hell yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Dude, change is inevitable. <laughs> so if you're not mm-hmm. trying to constantly glow up, grow up, and and be better, evolve, I mean, then what the hell are you doing? So right, go ahead and sit yeah. back, right. <laughs> and don't and, don't even don't even hang with us. And, and right, and, change, and you're afraid to pass the baton. Right, I'm about to say change is uncomfortable. I ain't never heard of no change that was. It's a smooth, easy transition. Right, you know, right. it's, it's unfucking comfortable. You got to shake some crap up sometimes to make mm-hmm. some 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 better moves. You just yeah. do. And you said it's inevitable too. It is. Mm-hmm. Change is always gonna happen. As humans, we were born to change. Like, exactly. so get used to it or keep getting uh, rocked. You know. All right. <laughs> mad. Mad. But I think it's also a culture thing too. Like, you know, I noticed that people think that oh, you know, since something the way things are is the right way and it needs to be culturally be passed down and i get it it's a legacy thing too i think i think that comes down to people thinking that their morals and stuff need to be a legacy but there are other things that could be a legacy like you know morals morals change because you know there are a lot of things that were legal back in the day that aren't necessarily right you know what i'm saying i think that's where people you know it's a matter of just you know adjusting i mean i ain't gonna say adjust your value because people are gonna feel how they feel but it's just like let people live um that's that's the only thing my whole thing with it it is what it is like people are always going to judge from the beginning of time people have judged and been judgmental so it's just something that's inevitable but you know we just got to keep reminding our people like hey like unity is where it's at and if you keep we keep loving each other like love will be all over the world it'll be infinite but we have to start with ourselves loving yourself is going to stop you from being in people's comments and stitching people and asking them about their private life you know when in reality that don't even matter like you you really could be focused on what you could do for your community because there's somebody that looks like you and lives like you that is not able to get resources um because of you know the system that we live in you know it it it, it, it could be better you know so it's right. like we could be focusing on that rather than focusing on oh why why do you get this surgery is this surgery trending or or why do you you know why why do you decide to identify as this like stuff that just doesn't matter <laughs> like we got bigger fish to fry <laughs> right I, i've never even understood that i don't understand questioning people and 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 being in people's personal business because right. what you don't what you do does not be finance doesn't do nothing for me yep. it doesn't enrich me in any type of way feed me finance so you, you fuck me yeah if you not if, if you not the three if you ain't feeding the finance to me i don't give a damn what you do just as long mm-hmm. as you ain't in my damn lane and i'm not gonna swear with you that's it mm-hmm. uh, so yeah. and, and then those will be the same people that will be upset when somebody hinders them from doing what they want to do oh you, you're in my business you well, you in other people's business. Stay out of other people's business. And people won't be yo. But I do want to ask, like, have you ever witnessed any phobic or ignorant, like, ignorance from trans, the trans community towards, like, you know, uh, this queer community, lesbians or studs or anything like that? Like, have you witnessed any of that, vice versa? Um, you know, I have not. I, but you know why? Because I face so much scrutiny in my own community from from studs. It'd be that stud on stud mm. weird, weirdest shit that I just do not understand. Where in what way? Okay, so yeah, explain it. I, I, I acknowledge everybody. So especially if you were a person of color, we lock eyes. I'm gonna smile at you, or I'm gonna nod you up. You gonna get some some type of energy from. Me. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to certain studs, you if you nod them up, you, you know you, you, you try to give them some energy. It's a automatic like pause, like yo, know, men like men do that stud. too though. Men do that too. Yeah, I, I, yes, I wanna, yeah. I just yeah. want to put that out there. Yeah, I, yeah, I know y'all do. Oh, I know y'all do. And I just don't understand. It'd be, it'd oh no! So don't serious. say y'all. I don't do that shit. <laughs> oh, no, oh, hold on, don't. Because, because, because I be hey. look, look, look. Well, I tell you one thing right now. I don't mean to cut you off, Bunky, but that shit used to piss good? me. That shit used to piss me off. Like when I first started transitioning and like becoming more masculine, like my, like, like like physically look more masculine. 
um and and like i still had that like in like internally especially like being raised as a woman like being told to smile at people and be polite and those types of things like like i still kind of had that like instinct of like oh there's somebody over there like let me smile at them and be nice and be polite yeah. even if i'm like yo like get the fuck out my face you know what i mean but um so that there was that training to a certain degree but there was also Ooh. like a part of me that really is just a nice person like i see people all the time i'm like hi like Z like i mean zion talked about this the other day like like literally the first time i met him in person i'm like come on man give me a hug and he like <laughs> like, i'm not a like super like i'm not like a super affectionate person but like i'm at least the type of person to be like hey what's up man how you doing or like hey or compliment people like yo i like them shoes yes. or I, I like your outfit like yeah. i'm just that mm -hmm. i, I want to give like positive energy good vibes to people you know what i mean Thanks. and so i i noticed that like i would smile you know hey how you doing walk in the store and shit like that and dudes be like you know, or you hold a door open for another dude, they looking at you like, you know what I mean? Like you're trying I to fuck in the bathroom. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? In the nearest bathroom. And it's like, bro, I'm just being polite. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, and so that shit used to piss me off. And I, I've noticed, I'm, I'm, so I'm kind of glad that you brought that up because I've noticed over the years, I've kind of gotten a little bit more hardened. Like now, like I'll be walking through a store and I'm just like. Yeah. Y'all, if you're listening to this only on the podcast, you can't see my face. But if you're watching this on YouTube, then you'll see my face. I was just kind of like, what yeah. the hell? Like, yeah. I, now I just kind of me mug people. Like, don't look at me. Yeah. And now when people do look at me, I'm like, what the hell are they looking at? Like, why are they smiling? No. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I ain't gonna like, lie. It, it made me hard. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, living in the South is like a medium. Like, people, everybody's nice and stuff. But at the same time, I've lived in a very racist area. It's where that fake nice. Those, those. Yeah, but it's some people where it's it's some real mean shit, real mm -hmm. racism right to your face. Like you know, mm -hmm. look at you and like, and I'm and I'd be like, hmm, I'm questioning my safety right now. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, Bunky, what was you saying? Like as far as your uh, what you go you, through you as far as you would see a stud basically, and you'd it, be like, giving them energy. It's, that's what you would yeah, do. It, yeah, it just be just that weird ass. Like I can't, I, I'm not fucking with you. I'm not. I can't acknowledge you. Like I can't give you like let you in my space type energy and I to me that's just it's weird it's a sign of weakness to me it's a sign of insecurity mm. to me and I just I, when, when I get that energy Ooh, where I'm in with that can I, I ask you a question from it. sure can I ask you a question in regards to that line of, oh, yeah, um, of um, situation like do you think that part of that is do you think that's a show of toxic masculinity or do you Facts. think that is, or do you think that's a fear of like, oh, this other woman who is clearly a lesbian is looking at me and she's probably, maybe she's going to try to hit on me. Like, do you think that that's a part of it at all? Like, cause you know how like oh, a lot of no, men, <laughs> okay, okay. The only reason why I say oh, that. Oh, look, I ain't looking at him like that. <laughs> no, no, no. No way. <laughs> no, no. I've met, look, I, I, I only ask this because that plays into toxic masculinity, <sighs> right? I have met men like legit, uh. like legit who are heterosexual and won't even be friends with a gay man because they automatically think that man is going to hit on them. That will make me question them because why? Oh yeah, for you, sure. If but you are, I'm gonna say if you secure your your masculinity or it, 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 same thing with the stud. If you are securing yourself as a woman and the, your masculine present itself, then you should not be it, it swayed in any way by my energy like i shouldn't even even face you and if i just if, if i'm coming at you with a you know i i always tap my chest to you know to mm -hmm. show you his love so if that yeah. is intimidating to you then that's a you thing because i mean i can't i'm not gonna change and can't change who i am i'm not gonna harden right. myself uh, to appease you you know what i'm saying right. if my energy is and my spirit wants to be bubbly and, and smile that's what i'm gonna do and if you, mm -hmm. so move around if you don't like it move around yeah you're not gonna, that. You, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna come up to me you ain't gonna touch me so mm -hmm. move around i love That's that i love that i was gonna say just because like i mean i feel that like you know what i'm saying i i masculinity i i love it and i relate to it but at the same time it's okay to be you know let your balance come out everybody got feminine masculine energy like let it flow i don't even think it's a masculine and feminine thing honestly it's just a human thing like just show True. love for one but, another but that's not, a it, part doesn't of have, is... it doesn't have to be a, a masculine or a feminine thing to smile yeah. at someone well not in the but generic society... way yeah like yeah, more but... so a spiritual way because that's how they see it like but society has made it that this thing True. of like you know what i mean like being I mean, nice is is, is being feminine yeah or being flirtatious like even yeah, even right. being polite is now considered being flirtatious 
mm. like part of the reason why I don't huh. do that. Like I was saying for uh, earlier, like how she, uh, Bunky says, well, you know, I'm not going to let somebody, let people harden me. I can respect that. I, I, but I think that also goes to show the differences. And when you start to be seen in the world as a man, I cannot, as a man, smile at another man and then he look think I'm yeah. trying to I'm trying to do some and he's and now he's so That's insecure so he's so insecure within his sexuality or within his own space that he thinks I'm trying to do something that could turn deadly yeah that could and be a whole fact. a whole fight that could be a whole whatever so now now every time I see you I'm just gonna be like I've had to catch myself what too up? like because I'm the type I, we're having a conversation and I'm like I like this conversation I'm a smile but I've called myself you know, having conversation with other men and just being like, okay, let me not smile so much because I know that it's just weird. So it is like a, a weird, like, you know, toxic masculinity thing that other people have that I don't want to trigger in them because, you, like you said, it could turn into anything. Well, it's some stupid fool uh, ass women out here that be wanting to play. Shoot them up, bang, bang, too. So it, it, the same thing kind of goes for studs, too, depending on who mm-hmm. you're dealing with. But, but like, I know who my energy is attracted to. It's attracted to other good energy. And if right. I'm not feeling you, I steer clear from your ass. So I, I and, my, and besides, my ancestors don't play about me no way. So, okay. you know, I, okay. I, I, I talk about it. Not, I <laughs> so I about it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just asked that because, like I said, like I, I've had those situations where dudes are like really be like offended that you are polite to them. You know what I mean? Weird. Right. Weird. It's really weird. weird. It's really weird. I live in Pennsylvania, though. It's a weird ass place, man. <laughs> it's well, a weird ass place. I, I really think it's just the world, though, is because of how, I mean, hell, it is like every day we're seeing bull crap on, on TV, black folks being murdered in the streets by police, this, that, and the third. Racism is running rampant, ignorant. Since I mean, not to say that it ain't always been uh, racism, but since the Trump era, it's just been so. It's been late. more in your face, yeah, more oh, in your face. My, sure. Yeah, so so all that I mean, and all the, the, the or women's rights being um, snatched off, and all kind of mm-hmm. bull crap going on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And we be worried about the wrong damn shit. Right. We, right. we worry about what's going on with, in people's bedroom. We worried about what's going on. Yeah, well, it's, you know, you better be worried about what's going on in them do. government offices and shit. That, that's, that's where what, it's happening. That's what I need to know. I'm they are a brewing. How right? How are y'all spending our money? Because the taxes are due every year. So what's going every, on? Okay. Right, that, right. And that's why I be Please, thinking, mind the business that pay you, and mind the business mind. you pay. Think about that. <laughs> Okay. Mm-hmm. Come on. That's a word, young brother. That's okay. A word. <laughs> That's a word. That's real life. The uh, there was a link. We we won't we won't talk about the specifics of it. Okay. But yeah. we'll just say this. Um Zion sent me a link. I don't know if he's if you saw it in your in the Google Doc. But I didn't send the podcast because I didn't think it was helpful. Oh, <laughs> okay. I didn't think it was helpful because the way the way Micah responded, I'm like, yeah, this ain't gonna this ain't gonna be a. Real it was thing. bad, bro. It was bad, <laughs> but it, it begged the question. It begged the question of, um, how studs experience masculinity and exude their masculinity is the, mm-hmm. the overarching theme of this, right? Mm-hmm. The question that was posed in this this video that he sent me that I wish I could unsee. And I only saw like 12 minutes of that shit, bro. Like, I was like, oh my God, this is like basura. This is trash. This is garbage. Why do studs get top surgery? And is it because it's trending? So I kind of want to know from your perspective as a masculine um, woman, as a stud, do you think that it's a weird thing or like studs shouldn't get top surgery? I know you, I know your overarching theme is you don't give a fuck what other people do, but like just for like the, the, the sake of, for the sake of That's this conversation, like, you know, the, give your input. I, I think that's insane. I, <laughs> I mean, why? Why are you, for what? I mean, because then I'm, that's making me wonder then what kind of stud are you trying to, be? I mean, because if you're a stud, that means you are acknowledging that have breasts and because you know women have titties you know uh, so and you know usually the stud is messing with a woman who wants to suck on some titties who wants to see some titties <laughs> when they, i mean you know 
I, I ain't never met one woman. I ain't never had one woman that I've dealt with say, I'm so glad. Oh, I wish you would get rid of your titties. I, they all are glad that I got them. Like, so, I, <laughs> so for you to want to cut them off, I'm, I mean, oh, do your bad. You know, hey, if that's what you want, hey. But why? Why? Yeah. If, you, if, if, if you are, if you're, a, you're just a masculine person, a woman, don't mean that you're not a woman. So I'm sorry if you ask me. That's for the fellas. To me, for the big fellas. Okay. Yeah, that's so interesting. That is interesting because then it begs the question like, is our anatomy really all that makes us women or men? Is that really all that it is? Ooh. And is that all that is that all that's, that's, um, I mean, uh, granted, the, if we're talking outside of the LGBTQ community or more specifically the trans community, of course, everyone's going to say our anatomy is what makes us a male mm. or female. Yeah. Um, but I'm not speaking in the context of biology or male and female because we don't have enough time to get into that conversation. But just like from a man, like what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, think that it wouldn't make a stud less of a stud to have top surgery. I don't know. I think that honestly, it shouldn't even be a big deal if a stud or any woman or any anybody, any person wants to have um, top surgery. They, they should they should be able to just if even if it's just purely because they don't like their chest they don't like the way it looks or they just they just want a flat chest like why does it have to be this deep thought process of like oh like it's because of the like why can't it just be a presentation you know what i mean like there are plenty of like cis women who get breast implants for why because they just they want bigger titties they want to present something for whatever their reason they like the aesthetic bbls all these different cosmetic surgeries is because they like the aesthetic of it I get what you're saying, and I agree to a certain extent. Your breasts do not define you as a woman, as a man, who, or as or as a man. Absolutely. Yeah, and I know people who've, who've gotten double mastectomies and very much still are be- beautiful women. But I'm saying, as you, how you posed the question to me, the reason why I said that it was not, I mean, I, I wouldn't do it. It's just that it's because to me. To alter your, yourself in that way just for an aesthetic, I, I don't know. It's just I'm not really. I don't. I don't. I don't jive with it. That's just that's not something yeah, that you, I. Would you feel do. like it's deeper than that. You feel like yeah. When you take a step to surgery. It's more than just the clothes you put on and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. I'm, so you talking so about? I, think I get that. Yeah, I'm, it's natural. It's, it seems more like it's an accessory. You know what I'm saying? Like like putting mm. on a chain. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If, if we're thinking about it in that way, to me, I wouldn't necessarily say it's like putting on an accessory, but I think that like internally, we're all trying to present something externally, right? Like we're all trying to present something. Like, yeah, but there's presentation, a reason why. But you I know think what I mean? Presentation is different. I think I could see that because you could change your silhouette. It'd be one thing, maybe maybe if she was binding. I I don't know. Like I think it's I think it's deep. I think I would like to hear the perspective too from somebody who's done it to see what what their thinking is around it. Like if they're still Mm -hmm. identifying, okay, I'm a stud, I'm a woman and I like, you know, and and I'm a lesbian. Okay, what what does the top surgery do for you necessarily? Like I would wanna see that. Because I think think it's body dysmorphia. It could could be very well because it's that's different than than gender dysmorphia. dysmorphia, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean that th- that would make sense, you know what I'm saying? If that mm-hmm. made if the silhouette of their body that changing made their body image better, I could see that. Like, but it just is different because you know dysphoria and dysmorphia. So then it being dysmorphia it doesn't really have to do necessarily with your gender. It's kind of like how you see yourself, mm-hmm. right? So I mean, right. I but that's that's what I mean by say like the presentation or the aesthetic is how you're seeing yeah. yourself and you want other people to see you that way. I'm not trying to say it in a way of like, oh, like we're trans people and we're faking. We just want to look. This, that's not what I mean. No, no, I get what you, you know, know what I mean. I'm just All saying right. when it comes to like a woman, it, it, the masculinity aspect isn't in the identity. The masculinity aspect is in expression. Right. You can change your expression. You know what I'm saying. But once you have surgery, it becomes a part of you in a way. Not it doesn't it is not it doesn't not like flat chest man. Like it is not. What I'm saying but i'm saying if you change your your chest to be just flat it doesn't change your gender you know what i'm saying but at the same time it changes your identity not your identity but it changes who you are like you if you when you're naked you know what i'm saying um so i don't know like I, it's not who you are but i just think it changes a dynamic to you because you do operate differently like 
in certain aspects. Because if you're oh, navigating, also. if you're navigating the lesbian community, but then again, I'm saying there there are women that don't have a chest that don't have chest. So I don't know. Like it gets tricky. But I think I think it's deeper. I think it's a I'm, level deeper because hey, masculinity. A, oh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying. I think you're right. I think it's a case by case yeah. basis. Because yeah. if it's a stud, a lot of times it's masculine presenting woman. And the, ma- the masculine presentation a lot of times has to do with clothes, things that yeah. can be, you know, changed in an instant. You can go yes. in another room, come back and be dressed in a different way. You know what I'm saying? So that masculine presenting it because stud, it's a very to me, it's a very specific like group of people. It's not a broad spectrum of just like not not saying like it's one type of person but i'm saying like to me like that's why i wanted to ask you as well what you see as the definition of stud because for me i see it as a masculine presenting black woman you know what i'm saying that's the one yeah so and i think people get that mixed up um because that's what i'm saying it's a certain thing so i'm saying it has that's why i'm asking i'm like that's yeah because this came up in that in the in the the link that that you sent me and i'm like you know this like this is i am kind of curious about this like is it a when we look at masculinity is it to some degree of performance or is these mm. learned traits these uh this something that we're presenting and when you start to add surgery into that like how does that change that expression right is i guess what i'm what i'm trying to get at you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah uh well z basically summed it up pretty damn well in a nutshell <laughs> I, I agree 100 percent with what he said uh so yeah yeah that's the only way i could i could really interpret it reason that um, it gets us pushed back is because we do live in a world that is so binary. Um, we have to mm-hmm. understand that mm-hmm. it's not necessarily us, but it's the collective. Like we live in a collective yeah. where a binary looks a certain way to certain people. Right. Um, and everybody has their own idea of gender. So everybody is going to have their, their own opinion about it. Um, and I think that even ties into with the whole situation where like I was uh, running into people like uh, talking about is top surgery a trend? It's like this, this thing where we're so caught up in the binary and what we're used to seeing. Um, now we live in a world where non-binary people exist. So it's like, um, there are certain, like for me, I'm a binary trans person, but at the end of the day, I do, I see things in a non-binary way. Like I don't necessarily put somebody in a box um, because of the standards that are historically put in place. Like that shit don't got nothing to do with me in my opinion, you know? So yeah, that's, that's kind of how I live. So yeah, I mean, but at the end of the day, it is, uh, you know, people love their culture. They love the lifestyle that they built their whole life around you know so i think that it comes down to that sometimes um of this you know this word means this to me so when i see it a different way it it, it makes me turn my head like is that that's not how i usually see it so i mean you know it's about you know just i mean like at the end of the day like we were saying we don't really mind but at the end of the day i mean when things turn up that way i think it's just what we're used to um you know the binary has looked the same way for so long and you know you know, trans people and, and everything in between have exist and alternative people with horns have, have been around, um, but they've always been in the spotlight because it's not quote unquote normal. And I mean, it was not normal. In, if you think about it, that was that was how it was back way back when when we were in tribes. Think about oh, it. Yeah, our yeah, an, yeah. Our yeah. Ancestors yeah. did all of that. Did all of that. All, what would be considered alternative now? Our mm-hmm. ancestors have done that for thousands of years. Have horns, bones, mm-hmm. in their ages. In their, yeah. All yeah. of that. that that's well, not, it's a new norm. Oh, the white supremacy version of a norm because everything like we've been our culture has been stolen from us so right. like this yeah. new binary doesn't associate with our culture and what has is actually historically correct mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying because our history has been stolen so when it comes down to it it is turned to the side because it's this western version of the binary this western version of the norm you know mm-hmm. so it comes down to that but like yeah That's if you think if you know your people you know your tribe and you be like all oh, these people in these these you know scriptures and in, in these stories have have these things and it's not irregular then that's you for that's kudos to you for being awake (laughs) but there are a lot of people who are asleep and and, and indefinitely like you know yeah it's definitely a blockage you know the more you open up and you know you can never stop expanding so it's like yeah i mean that's kind of my stance on it but you know again the culture thing is, is is real you know we love the lives we live the lives we live and you know like that i feel like our culture and the way we think is a part of like our legacy sometimes but at the same time we have to learn to let certain things go that just don't fit but you know if it's not damaging nobody else then believe what you believe but yeah i know one of the other questions on here was uh where did you learn masculinity or what does mask and or 
and we'll just do and what does masculinity mean to you as a stud like do you, do you think it's different than what masculinity is to men um so i la- i learned masculinity from my uncle mm-hmm. um, and he's passed away now but he he was uh i, I actually made a tiktok about this um he, he was a a whole ass dude um <laughs> amazing man a, amazing family man but he was a whole Ho, ho, ho. And so I learned. <laughs> Santa Claus. I, 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 I seen how he moved with the women he had. He, the, he, he had the thing that I wanted. I wanted women. So I emulated that and was able to duplicate and, and, and get the same results. Now, was it very much toxic, toxic masculinity? Oh, yes. What so, makes but, you say it, it was toxic? Now, because, see, now I gotta, you know, I gotta ask. I'm gonna oh, have to, oh, gonna oh, have to oh, keep oh, going oh, deep, girl. We gotta oh, go deep, girl. Mind, I don't mind telling you, Mike. <laughs> go ahead, because, go ahead. Because it, it was rooted in in patriarchy. It was rooted in misogyny. It was, you know, what I'm saying, um, and and manipulation, all these things, you know. Um, and so realizing that, I just kind of took the code and and. And I angled it a little bit and made it my own, and, and that's what I was using as a blueprint to to go on my own path of destruction. Um, but as I started healing, I realized that I needed to stop dealing with people uh, in that way and, and started start dealing with people from the heart. Um, how do you see masculinity like for yourself as a stud? And then uh, do you like do you feel like it's different from uh, masculinity with men? Like how it is yeah. for men? Yes, I, it is quite different um, to me, uh, but it's also a lot of similarities. Um, but it's different because we, at the end of the day, we're not men. You know what I'm saying? I I, I can say I'm swinging my dick, but I'm not. I mean, this it's, it's a, a a dick that I have to put away. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and Third not, drawer from right, the bottom. Is the uh, the masculine? It, it, it's similar. It has similarities, it has its differences, um, and and I'm I'm sure it's a case by case basis, but as, for me, um, once I started growing up and maturing, then my my perception of masculinity changed. It wasn't about being a uh, you know big, strong, powerful, you know, or presenting to be that way. It was about just having a, a, a more str- stronger mindset, more um, a logical mindset when it came to certain things and how I handled myself. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 it was really the, took the whole bravado out of it, took my ego out of it mm-hmm. and more of a mental uh, changer. I really, I really enjoy you uh, speaking on that. Like it just, it's great to hear because I feel like, you know, everybody like masculinity and the fact it's just like such a, a, a thing that is natural to you, right? But you also have to um, digest it and, and really like yes. we're saying like mature within it because I feel like there's levels to it. You know what I'm saying? Like it, with anything. Um, but like, yeah. And and honestly, for me, like um, even even though like I identify as a man, it's just like I also feel like sometimes that my trans masculinity is a lot different than like cis men because oh, I don't for sure. have oh, yeah, for sure. I don't have the same ideologies they have a lot of the times, like for certain things um, that are that are not necessarily innate, but I guess like it's it's taught to them a lot of the times, and and that's like I, a lot of things weren't taught to me. Like I didn't grow up as a boy, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I, I I had to I I was I had to grow into myself as a man, like, but and I had to really like understand and learn, you know, masculinity in my way, you know what I'm saying? And I don't think people understand that a lot of the times of how masculinity and it's such a personal thing, even when yeah, like it's it's a personal thing, it's something you develop and, and it's the values that you build. Like, you know, what you believe mm-hmm. is a good man isn't necessarily a good man or a, a good version of masculinity to somebody else. So I, I just, you know, it's very personal. And it's just, it's a part of your journey, you know what I'm saying? So even you having to mature within the, in your masculinity and understanding like, you know, the masculinity that inspired you isn't the one that you resonate with. It's like, it's, it's a journey to it. And I feel like um, we all could learn from each other too, like, because, you know, masculinity isn't exclusive to men. And I don't think people don't understand that either. Um, like, you know, masculinity and feminine, feminine energy is within all of us. So it's like, 
it's this it's this balance you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and, and we can learn from every aspect of, of just everybody but yeah i agree with that so, so can i ask y'all something do y'all think that y'all are dope men because y'all have an understanding of what it means uh to ha- to be a, a, a woman or have mm-hmm. feminine energy like right. it, it was to be born with feminine energy I would say we're all born with um, masculine and feminine energy. Right. It's kind of like, so that's that's not really what it is, at least for me. I don't want to speak for Zion, but mm-hmm. for me, I think that, how do I put this? I think that I'm more aware of it because I wasn't, I had to think about those things. Mm. Like cis men don't have to think about how right. to be a man. Cis men don't have to think about how to be a man or how to be masculine. They don't have to think about that. It's, they already taught that whether it's from emulating the men who are around them, especially if they have had father figures in their life or just older mentorship in their life, they were already taught that. And if they weren't taught that from people within their family or someone that was close to them, they were treated as a man anyway. And what society deems as being a masculine man. So they already got that education, so to speak, from from being born. You know what I'm trying to say? Whereas like for me as a trans man, like I can't say that it's because I was a woman that, you know, and being born with this femininity that maybe makes it different. No, I had to think about those things because I started realizing the difference in my masculine energy being perceived as a woman is very different than being perceived as a man. The expectation on me was different, but I didn't recognize that until I started being treated as a man in society. Mm. Like I've had conversations with cis men who don't see certain things as an issue and I'm like and or didn't see certain things as an issue until I brought it to their attention like you don't see this as being fucked up like for example I had a conversation with one of my bros who's a cis man we've been friends since I was 14 he now he he would tell you I've always treated you like a man I never saw you like, it's as weird as it is I never saw you as anything different even though you mm-hmm. weren't at the time you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so you know I was lucky enough to have those experiences even though it was toxic you know what I mean? Because like mm. at that point in time, like I did have good examples of what it means to be a man. My father, who passed away, like I, I definitely emulate him a lot. He, I learned a lot of my masculinity from him, and that's why I think I'm not as toxic because my dad wasn't toxic. Mm. And I can wholeheartedly say that, not because I look up to him and because I, I respect and honor him and, and and care about him and love him, even though he's gone. He like, you know, it's it's not even just that. I saw the way my father was. He was very secure in himself as a man and is and and within that space. And mm. I emulate that. You know what I mean? But I've also seen the toxic side of it. Like I was in gangs. I was I was you know I was in I was doing a lot of crazy stuff back then with my bros and stuff like that. That they would tell you I was a dude just along with them to a certain mm. degree, right? But so anyway, I was having uh, that was kind of a sidetrack note there. But um, with him, I had this conversation. I said, "Yo, don't you think it's a little weird that like as a man, if you go to uh, let's say you go to a grocery store." and you need to use the bathroom and it's not open to the public that if you ask them to use the bathroom they will expect you to go outside and pee hmm. and i've had this situation now as as pass passing the term passing i hate it but you know passing in the world and and being received as a man i've gone to places where i'm like can i use the restroom and it is a public restroom and they'll be like oh go pee outside go go pee in a bush go pee on a tree or, 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 or say, oh, we don't have public restrooms knowing damn well they do because I just watched a woman go in there and you let her use the bathroom. Wow. Right? But she, but you assume because I'm a man, like, and I, so I said this to him, I said, don't you feel like that's kind of like almost in a certain de- degree treating you like barbaric? Because we're in a civilized, we're in a civilized moment in time, right? Where I should be able to go use the bathroom in privacy and be able to wash my hands and, and be hygienic right. because... You know, regardless whether I have a penis or not, let's say if I, you know, let's say I did have a penis as a cis man, I got to touch my penis to pee. So I got to wash my hands before that and after that. Or even just even even if you have a vagina, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So, I, so, so 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 I so I said to him, I said, don't you feel like that's kind of like like it's kind of fucked up? Like that's like there you're not treated as a person. Like if you were a woman and you asked to go use the bathroom, you would freely get that opportunity but as a man you're expected to go out there why like don't you see something wrong with that or why is it that like 
a lot of men aren't taught basic survival things they aren't taught how to cook and i'm not talking about hunting and fishing i'm not talking about that i'm talking about within our modern society right because right. i know as a hispanic person myself as a latino like when i was growing up as a girl i got taught how to cook how to clean how to take care of kids hmm. i never wanted kids never wanted to deal with kids never i still don't know how to take care of kids but i was taught it <laughs> you know what i mean like mm -hmm. And I, and, I, and I talked to some of my cis male um, friends who do have children or whatever, and they're like, yo, like they were completely lost. Look at most cis women who are in relationships with cis men, and it's like they get a cookie just for like why, like changing a diaper because they didn't know how to do it. Whereas mm -hmm. like it's something that is expected and taught to women how to do. But like when I started bringing up some of these things, I'm like, they're, they're actually sat back and was like, yo, I never really like realize that it's kind of fucked up like why are my why am i being taught this why 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 aren't i given the same opportunity as this and that so i went on this whole tangent to to basically say that you know i think that my masculinity is different as a trans person not i think there is a part of it because i was a woman right there is a part of that i think i do understand things differently because i can see both sides but mm -hmm. i think about it so deeply and so differently because i've experienced both sides so because mm. I've experienced the privilege, because I'm going to, and people can be mad at this, but there's privilege to being a woman, just like there's privilege to being a man, just like there's privilege to being white, just like th there's privilege on, like everyone has some level of privilege somewhere. You know what I mean? But I experienced mm -hmm. the privilege of being a, like certain privileges I got being a woman that I no longer get as a man. And I experienced some privileges now mm -hmm. as a man that I never experienced as a woman. So it's like, I have to think about things in a different way. And it, and it makes you question more and more and more about yourself and go deeper into yourself and your understanding of these things because you're being you're having these experiences that cis men don't have just like we don't have experiences that cis men have right you get what i'm saying like there are just certain things that we we're not going to experience that's why i always make that distinction of of it's different to be a trans man like that's like aside from biology there's difference there's a societal uh, a social difference to being a trans man i like you bringing in your your perspective about it because that that makes sense for for me personally like one of the reasons that i feel like i do know a little bit more i feel like i'm you know more morally sound than most guys uh including like cis men and stuff like that is because of the fact of the comfortability that like like being in the spaces with women and hearing them talk about this or seeing the struggle um because also like as a man now like women are less comfortable around me like i'm i'm less likely to be able to have a conversation with a woman about things that she's struggling with or her personal life or something like that because you know w women are a lot more guarded around men um and hey, with reason because uh, some of some men are fucking scary um so it's yeah. just yeah yeah and it's and very creepy at times so it's like i i see myself as someone that you someone could talk to but but the fact that you know when i was growing up and stuff i was in those spaces where when I, women felt comfortable letting me know these are the things i'm struggling with i'm also able to see it because for me like i didn't pay too much attention to gender until i was like older and it was kind of put in my face um even even younger i had a channel um called the mighty skater girl that was my old channel like and it's some it's literally like you know it was in the name of my online alias so you would think i'll be faced with gender but for the most part i kept like online i i was having to prove my gender i was having to be like well i am a girl like even though people hear my voice and how i'm talking and they're like oh no you're just like a little boy and you know facing that was i didn't really take it so much personally where i'm like dang maybe i am or maybe thinking oh maybe i do relate to this masculine like aspect i'm just thinking like this is what i'm told this is what i was told i am and y'all are trying to tell me something different so i just think that also being in that aspect of like being on the internet young like i started my youtube channel gaming at like 13 even the gaming community is toxic so you're faced with misogyny and racism and all this kind of stuff like on a polarized level um and being that so young i understood the struggle of you know women because of how just women are perceived and the things that i hear on video games from kids who you can't you don't know where they're at and you don't know who they are so they say whatever they want um kind of thing so just hearing hearing the perspective there and you know having a single mom and things like that so 
these things showed me how things were so like as i step into my manhood i'm like i don't want to be the person that is you know oppressing uh women because i love women um women have raised me you know things like that so i think that's why i do have like a, a more like sound perspective and, and and more in my opinion a more more like a morally sound perspective um than a lot of cis men and stuff like that is because i i i see it i feel it because it's people i love you know what i'm saying um so I, that's I been a, that's been our experience to some degree the oppression mm -hmm. of uh, the, uh, that oppression to a certain degree because mm -hmm. a lot of men have never experienced that